and welcome to the conversation. It's Adrian Lawrence. Today I am joined by political reporter for Vox, Nicole Norea. Thank you so much for joining us, Nicole. Thanks for having me, Adrian. Yes, so I know that you cover a range of personalities, conversations, everything in this political landscape right now that's really shaping the state level races and policies. But we are going to talk about somebody on the federal level, which is Senator Lindsey Graham. Yes, um, so Lindsey Graham uh, issued a proposal recently that would ban abortions after 15 weeks of pregnancy. Um, his reasoning was this notion that fetuses can feel pain at that point in development, which is something that is very much a point of active scientific debate and hasn't been proving. Um, it does include exceptions for cases of rape, incest, and to save the life of the pregnant person. Um, but this proposal kind of came out of the blue from Lindsey Graham. Um, there's a real sense that he was bucking his own party and trying to articulate where the Republican Party stands on abortion, which uh, he says is not a total nationwide ban yet, but um, it's still drawing the line fairly early on in pregnancy. Yes, and before we go more down the path of Lindsey Graham's new proposal with this 15 week abortion line here, let's kind of talk about maybe the potential motives for him to get in this because it seems like before, well, no, it doesn't seem like it's a fact. Before he was, you know, he was praising the Dobbs ruling from the US Supreme Court, reversing Roe v. Wade, saying that this is a state's rights issue. So all of a sudden now he's willing to have it on the federal landscape and determined as a federal issue, but also to what he is facing a potential subpoena down in Georgia. And it looks like he may need a lot of the GOP leverage behind him. Is that what you think might be potentially encouraging him to step out into this space and to introduce this legislation? I mean, this isn't the first time that Lindsey Graham's waded into the abortion debate, but I do think that the timing is curious for some of the reasons that you mentioned. But you know, I, I again, I think this kind of blindsided Republicans. Maybe he thought he was kind of getting out ahead of the issue because a lot of Republicans have been really reluctant to even address the issue on the campaign trail ahead of the midterms. You know, Republicans are at a very delicate moment right now, where you know there's only weeks to go before the election and. Um, their stance on abortion and their their decades long campaign to overturn Roe is very unpopular um, with voters. So um, they've largely been trying to avoid it. But I think Graham wanted to perhaps portray his stance as a moderate one. Um, but you know, I, I don't think that that's where most of the country is at. You know, a, a lot of Republicans supported early earlier versions of um, this bill that would have banned abortion in 20 weeks. This is a 15 week ban um, and they have since come out against this stricter version. And among the states that do place restrictions on abortion, most of them do so at 20 weeks or later. So that should show you that this isn't a middle ground approach, um, even if that's the way that Graham's trying to sell it and, and sell it to voters. Yeah, it seems like he's trying to sell a lot, um, and maybe it's hopefully, uh, maybe hopefully in his mind, this thought that he's going to get the press to focus more on his 15-week um, abortion uh, ban as opposed to maybe the fact that he is subject to a potential subpoena down there in Atlanta. Uh, it does seem definitely nefarious, but I know Lindsey Graham isn't necessarily new to nefarious behaviors, uh, particularly when it comes to politics and his antics. And so let's dive a little bit more into this 15 week. Um, so as we've kind of discussed, like that is super early. And also it's not necessarily scientifically firm in this ideology that that's when a fetus will feel pain. So in terms of his picking 15 weeks, um, where do you think this came from? Yeah, it's curious because again, he supported 20 week bans in the past. And he's been trying to frame this as a quote unquote late term abortion bill, which is totally disingenuous. Late term abortion isn't a medical term, but the way that it's generally understood, it's it's supposed to be between at least 21 to 24 weeks of pregnancy and thereafter. And obviously 15 weeks is nowhere near that, but you know, I think, we're meant to take him at his word that he doesn't want to go further in banning abortion totally. Um, Democrats are certainly making the argument that this is kind of a slippery slope. Well, if they're willing to ban um, abortion at 15 weeks, who's to say that they wouldn't go further if they're in power? And um, I, I think, you know, even though again he's trying to make this look moderate, uh, Democrats are trying to paint it as extreme and um, quite the opposite. 
actually, to me, it, it resonates in this thought that, well, this doesn't seem like a, a way of conveying that the Republican Party is in touch with the with what the American people want, whether it's on the Republican end or the Democrat end, that it just tells me that the GOP is out of touch. And so it seems like this would be um, almost a death knell for the Republican Party and really indicative of the thought that their beliefs and their mantras are not necessarily aligned with where this nation is going. Would you say the same? I mean, certainly from the polling, that's what it would suggest. You know, Republicans have spent decades on this mission that they wanted to deliver for their base to overturn Roe, but you know, 85% or so of Americans think that abortion should be legal in all or most circumstances. And that is certainly not what this bill would do. You know, many people get abortions after the 20 week mark because it's only at 20 weeks that certain tests can be conducted to determine whether the fetus could have potentially life threatening conditions or conditions that are inconsistent with life. So. This isn't something that most voters support. I actually have been recently covering Latino voters who are generally thought to be a more conservative constituency when it comes to abortion. But even among them, majority Catholic, majority Christian, they don't believe that this is a right that should be taken away. So I think it, it, it it's just, it is out of touch. Absolutely, and it seems to suggest that that's where a lot of the GOP is going, where they are out of touch, where they're trying to push these religious backed moors on a lot of the United States, as opposed to let's actually pay attention to science. And it is also kind of weird to have these male identifiers out here kind of picking 15 weeks out of a hat. Uh, at times as it seems, um, but I think in part with our nation getting a little bit more intelligent and also having that access to social media and the internet has really changed the demographics and the landscape. So as uh, we talk about change in demographics and landscape, let's talk about the midterms and where things are largely in part because of Roe. As people are saying, it's Rovember. Uh, what have you seen so far? I hadn't heard no Rovember, but it, that's definitely what it is. Um, the national environment has totally changed for Democrats since the Supreme Court's decision came down. Um, you know, Democrats are now leading on the generic ballot, um, which is where pollsters ask voters which party they intend to support in the general election. Um, you know, of course, we've seen some skepticism about the polls potentially overestimating Democratic performance, but you know, it's going to be hard to know until election day. And there's definitely other indicators. Um, you know, we saw the enthusiasm in Kansas earlier this summer where voters. Pretty overwhelmingly rejected a ballot measure that would have allowed state lawmakers to enact more restrictions on abortion. And that's a really solidly red state. So that should tell you about where much of the country is at, even among Republicans. In that, we also sort of saw just the level of turnout. It was more turnout on it than in any primary in Kansas history. So Tons of enthusiasm on that side. We're also seeing data that in some states where abortion rights are under threat, young people and particularly young women are making up large shares of people who are registering to vote. So that they really are, you know, mobilizing around this at this point. Yes, absolutely, and that mobilization is so incredibly significant because, hey, the more voices, the more power, the more resources out there, the more possibility for potential change. And so I know that a lot of people, again, are talking about November and the potential with it, especially with Donald Trump facing a lot of investigations and charges, and as well as potential candidates such as Ron DeSantis now being under criminal investigation, as well as facing various civil suits for his antics on behalf of the GOP. I just wonder if, as it turns out, this whole reversal of Roe v. Wade will end up being the death knell for the GOP and revamping the entire party. We will see, I think it's very interesting. But I would love to know in terms of the landscape and what you are looking at and seeing on the political divide, what is it? Can you give us a taste? Yeah, so it's gonna impact races up and down the ballot this year. I'm looking at governor's races since many of them have veto power over bills restricting abortion that could be passed by Republican controlled legislatures. It's also a key factor in state attorneys general races since they're gonna be their state's top prosecutor and could prioritize 
abortion related crimes in states with abortion bans or decide not to enforce um, state abortion bans. And of course, you know, in some of these battleground Senate races, Arizona, um, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Wisconsin, Nevada, Arizona, um, all of those, it, of course, you know, Democrats are trying to warn voters that electing a Republican could mean another vote um, in favor of nationwide abortion restrictions. And now they have Lindsey Graham's bill to concretely point to. Um, but you know, I, I think in terms of pulling out a few races that are really interesting, um, Michigan is particularly interesting because it's a split um, a split control. So um, Democratic Governor Gretchen Whitmer is up for reelection this year, and um, she's facing a GOP legislature, and they're trying to implement a 1931 pre-Roe abortion ban on the books. Um, and she's sort of been standing in the way of that, trying to get the state Supreme Court to overturn it. Um, there's also a really interesting um, ballot measure that Michigan has on the ballot this year that would um, amend the state constitution to basically establish a right to reproductive freedom. Um, and that could put some, uh, put some obstacles in the way of the GOP legislature there. Um, but yeah, there's just so many that are, that are interesting races and it's, um, it, it is impacting everything up and down the ballot. Absolutely, it definitely seems to be so. And so can you please tell the viewers where they can find more, read more about your work? Uh, yeah, I write for Vox, um, also podcasting on the weeds. And um, you can read my stuff on Vox.com. Uh, yeah, I've been covering um, all of the abortion related developments at the state level and, and nationally. Fantastic, that's Nicole Norea, politics reporter for Vox. Thanks so much for joining us, Nicole. Thanks for having me.